Uh, I'm Ian Mulvaney. I'm Head of Product Development for a company called Mendeley. We also offer a digital solution for researchers. Um, prior to working at Mendeley, I was also involved with some of the digital uh, initiatives at Nature. Um, I think, uh, uh, first thing I'll just mention is that I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave at half past two, or at least in 35 minutes. So, um, I think the, comment that the, two, the comments that the two previous speakers have made I would generally broadly agree with. I would say that as well, the kind of things that we're trying to do at Mandalay, the kinds of things that are happening at, at Nature Network, uh, the kinds of things that ResearchGate are doing, they're all pointing to a general movement, uh, this idea that the web should be more efficiently used for scientists. Um, I don't really have any disagreement with anything anybody said so far. I think that I'll just instead make a couple of um, personal uh, uh, Comments. I think we, we talked about Science 1.0 earlier. I think the interesting thing about Science 1.0 is that it's a very optimized technology, but it's a very optimized 17th century technology for deferring risk in terms of sending content out via published paper, dead wood. Now, it's a bit nuts that science and research is still being driven by 17th century communication methods. So, that alone tells you that there are probably efficiencies of scale that can be reached by applying the kinds of technologies that have had broad market success um, on the open internet. Um, uh, impact has been mentioned, and this desire to always come back to the impact factor. I think the impact factor is an interesting thing historically because it's tend to be owned by one single company, and it's a measure which isn't open or uh, available to be analyzed in a scientific and rigorous way. And so what we at Mendeley are trying to do, part of our mission is to make the underlying data that people measure things like impact factors available and open to the public. So we've created a tool that allows researchers to manage their research, manage their individual papers. And we're currently working on extracting the citation now from those papers and making those available through an API. We think then that will enable people to build as Iliad said, article level metrics, or metrics about things like what are the research that is affecting undergraduates more say than senior researchers. The, the web presents us with an opportunity to be able to look at data in a much more fine-grained, granular way, and it's just, the onus is just there for people like ResearchGate, like Mendeley, like Nature, to, to make that data available and make better experiences for researchers. Um, I feel strongly that the, the kinds of data that we make available, we have to make available in kind of an open way. Uh, there are many good web standards out there which can help you identify things that you own on the web, uh, using things like micro formats, the semantic web. Those are, those are approaches that we're trying to follow. Um, I think one of the most exciting things to come out of the publishing industry in the last 10 years is the idea of trying to produce a researcher identifier. So I think the ORCID project, which may get mentioned later, is something that if you're if you're very serious about looking at future trends of, of reporting on science, that as as a series of journalists, I would highly recommend that you investigate. Um, investigate in, in what? Sorry, what was that? What? Um, so so the ORCID project, Alexander, is is, a, is yeah, it's a project for publishers are uh, coming out of the publishing industry to try and come up with. A, an industry standard for producing identifiers. And of course, the nice thing is if you have a researcher uh, ID from, from Thompson, or if you have an identifier which lives in, in ResearchGate, or if you have an identifier from Elsevier, having all the publishers being able to consume one identifier that these other identifiers could be mapped onto is very powerful. And, uh, 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 and so I, th I think one of the other most important things about the way science is evolving on the web is that the web gives you the ability to have a single name, a single URL, which can point to an identifiable thing. Be that thing, a journal publication, a person, a blog post, a comment, a data set. And, and that's where, in my mind, the revolution is going to come from. The ability for us to actually weave together many different networks. Not just networks which are social, not just networks which connect people to people, but networks that connect people to data, that connect data to data, and that through data allow people to find each other. And so, uh, what we've done at Mendeley is, I mean, I think, I, I think it's clear we're all, all the people on the panel here, 
all of us experts, we, I think it's pretty clear we all feel strongly that, that these tools are going to be very impactful. And the approach we've taken at Mendeley is to produce a tool that gives scientists immediate benefit in their workflow so that they don't have to look for uh, a pre-existing network of people that they know online, but they get, they get a, a, an immediate benefit. And then based on their behavior, uh, we can start recommending articles to them. We can start recommending people of interest to them. Uh, but it's all based on the idea that we can have or create a network of identifiers around these research objects. And, and uh, that's absolutely where I think the future of uh, future efficiencies of scale and research are, are going to come about. And so I'm huge, hugely supportive of the open access movement because it, it, it generates a whole new layer of granularity at which you can get identifiers for things that are happening in research. You can identify not only the journal as a whole thing, but you can identify a paragraph in the journal, a figure within the journal article. You can, you can identify even a research claim within a journal article. And, uh, and I, I think those are where, where the most important trends are going to be happening over the next five years. So that's kind of, that's kind of my, oh, sorry, yeah, the, the I'll mention one other thing which I think is actually really fascinating which is, uh, someone mentioned Wikipedia earlier, and this idea that we could use Wikipedia as a, as a form for publishing. One of the most fascinating things about Wikipedia is Wikipedia does not allow any new research to be published there. So Wikipedia, by its own ground rules, re uh, scientists cannot publish new work in Wikipedia because every single statement that is published in Wikipedia needs to reference a pre-existing source. Uh, and so uh, there are people I know at the Wikimedia Foundation who are looking into whether they can build alternative systems which would give researchers the scope to be able to use a system like that to produce to, 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 to produce a publishing platform. But it's kind of, it's kind of, kind of one of those very interesting uh, contradictions about the new, the new web, that one of the most powerful web tools doesn't allow the production of any new information. <laughs>